welcome to this edition of News Today, a series in which we discuss and briefly analyze the important news of the day. Let's have a look at today's main headlines. The independent high-level expert group on climate finance releases its report on climate finance at COP28 of UNFCCC. India launches the global green credit initiative at COP28. The Codex Elementarius Commission endorses India's proposal to establish global standards for millets. The United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification releases the Global Drought Snapshot 2023. The Defence Acquisition Council approves 2.23 lakh crore acceptance of necessity to push self-reliance in the defence industry. The 91st General Assembly meeting of the Interpol in Vienna celebrates its centenary year. Starting with the first main news, the independent high-level expert group on climate finance has released its report on climate finance at COP28 of UNFCCC. Before we look at the key findings of the report, let's understand some basics about the independent high-level expert group on climate finance. It was formed by COP26 Presidency and is mandated to develop policy options and recommendations to promote investments for UNFCCC Paris Agreement. Coming back to the key findings of the report, the report says that the amount of global climate finance committed has more than tripled over the last decade, but it is still too low. Also, climate finance is concentrated in developed economies and China, and also in mitigation rather than adaptation. Plus, the debt is predominant form of climate finance and most funding stays within the country of origin. The report goes further and also highlights that concerns do persist about the lack of transparency in measuring and delivering climate finance. Having said this, there are certain recommendations in this regard. It is recommended that an integrated climate finance framework is needed for meeting the Paris Agreement goals involving four sources of finance. Firstly, domestic public resources. Herein, the need is to boost tax revenues, eliminate harmful subsidies and implement carbon taxation. Secondly, private finance. Herein, the need is to increase it by more than 15 times on the current levels for meeting the needs of emerging markets and developing countries. Thirdly, multilateral development banks. Herein, the need is to triple the level of support by 2030 and access new sources of capital and guarantees along with securing strong shareholder support. Fourthly, concessional finance. A five-fold increase in it is needed by the year 2030. Herein, developed countries must lead by tripling the amount of bilateral concessional finance by the year 2030. Moving on to the next news, India has launched the Global Green Credit Initiative at COP28 of UNFCCC. The initiative will serve as the international platform for dialogue, collaboration and the exchange of innovative environmental programs and instruments. It has also been referred as the global platform for nature's ecological transformation. It aims to replace the conventional approach of focusing on carbon emissions to recognizing and incentivizing a broader spectrum of efforts. The key purpose of the Global Green Credit Initiative include science for sharing global technical know-how and experiences, policy for shaping green credit policy instruments, and supporting implementation for creating one common value chain. It will connect communities and self-help groups with companies or corporates and other stakeholders who can participate in the program through one marketplace. The key benefits of the initiative will be knowledge sharing, innovative solutions, collective actions, and participating countries can assert global leadership in providing environmental solutions. The initiative is also aligned with the principles of the Green Credit Programme. This program is an initiative that rewards and incentivizes eco-friendly activities by offering green credits, encouraging environmental sustainability and conservation. It was notified through the Green Credit Rules 2023 by the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change under the Environment Protection Act 1986. The governance structure of the Green Credit Programme includes a steering committee, administrator of the Indian Council of Forestry Research and Education, and technical committees. Also, at the event, India also proposed to host the 2028 Climate Change Conference, which would be COP33. 
In another news, the Codex Elementarius Commission or the CSE has endorsed India's proposal to establish global standards for millets. The CSE approved India's proposal for global standards on millets covering finger millet, barnyard millet, kodo millet, proso millet and little millet as group standards. The Food Standards and Safety Authority of India has set group standards which specify eight quality parameters like limits for moisture content, uric acid content among others for 15 type of millets. This endorsement coincided with the celebration of the International Year of Millets which was also proposed by India to raise awareness about nutritional and health benefits of millets. Millets are small grained, annual, warm weather cereals belonging to the grass family. They are known as nutri cereals as they provide most of the nutrients essential for human body's functioning. Before we conclude this news, let's understand more about the CSE. It was established in the year 1963 as an international food standards body jointly by the World Health Organization and the Food and Agriculture Organization. It is headquartered in Rome and has 189 members, including India. Its objective is to protect consumers' health and ensure fair practices in food trade. The Codex Elementarius, which is also known as the Food Code, is a collection of standards, guidelines and codes of practice adopted by the CSE. The Codex standards are voluntary in nature. Also, the agreement on application of sanitary and phytosanitary measures of the World Trade Organization recognizes Codex standards, guidelines and recommendations for international trade and trade dispute settlement. The WTO's sanitary and phytosanitary measures recognizes three international standard setting organizations which are also known as Three Sisters. For food safety, it is Codex. For plant health, it is International Plant Protection Convention and for the animal health, it is the World Organization for Animal Health. In another news, the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification has released the Global Drought Snapshot 2023. The United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification or the UNCCD is one of the three conventions originated at the 1992 Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro. The other two are the UNFCCC and the UN Convention on Biological Diversity. Let's have a look at the key findings of the snapshot. It says that 1.84 billion people are drought stuck and 85% of them live in low or middle income countries. Also, compared to men, women and children are over 14 times more likely to be killed by the climate fuel disasters. Additionally, the snapshot says that the anthropogenic drivers are causing more frequent and extreme droughts. These include land use changes, greenhouse gas emissions and increased water consumption. The UNCCD in its snapshot also highlights the need of global drought resilience to achieve triple dividends. These include avoiding future losses, reducing risks, increasing productivity and driving innovation, and fostering multiple social and environmental co-benefits. Herein, there are certain recommendations for global drought resilience. These include land restoration and sustainable management, nature-positive farming techniques such as drought-resistant crops, efficient irrigation methods, and soil conservation. Also, there is a need for disaster preparedness, early warning systems, and consolidation of regional initiatives to facilitate knowledge transfer and resource mobilization. Before we conclude this news, let's have a look at some key initiatives taken. At the global level, the UNCCD's Drought Initiative and International Drought Resilience Alliance have been undertaken. At the national level, India has launched the National Mission for Green India and the National Action Plan on Climate Change. Moving on to the next news, the Defence Acquisition Council has approved 2.23 lakh crore acceptance of necessity to push self-reliance in defence industry. Before we look into the news, let's first understand some basic terms involved here. Firstly, the Defence Acquisition Council or the DAC. It is the highest decision-making body in the Defence Ministry for deciding on new policies and capital acquisitions. It is chaired by the Minister of Defence. Secondly, the acceptance of necessity. It is the first step towards procurement of any military equipment and hardware under the Defence Acquisition Norms of the Defence Acquisition Procedure 2020. Coming back to the news, the acceptance of necessity has been approved for procurement of light combat helicopter 
anti-tagminations among others which is a step towards self-reliance. So what is the need of self-reliance in defense sector? Firstly, autonomy. Self-reliance provides decision-making autonomy in geopolitical issues. Secondly, reducing dependence on imports. India is the world's largest arm importer between the year 2018 to 2022 as per the SIFRI report. Also, it aims to achieve US dollar 5 billion in defense exports by the year 2025. Also, it prevents from disruption of supply chain like what is happening during the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Additionally, it aids in tackling neighbors like China and supporting friendly nations. However, there are certain challenges in this regard as well. These include the lack of private participation as in the total production for the year 2020-23, their share is around 19% only. Additionally, there is a lack of innovation and research and development and we are dependent on Western nations for cutting-edge technologies. Also, the limited budgetary allocations for defense, which is less than 1% and is far less than US and China. Also, the lack of cohesion between stakeholders is also a challenge. Before we conclude this news, let's have a look at some of the government initiatives. These include the Defense Acquisition Procedure 2020, Positive Indigenization List, Innovations for Defense Excellence, and corporatization of ordnance factories, to name a few. In another news, the 91st General Assembly meeting of the Interpol in Vienna has celebrated its centenary year. The Interpol or the International Criminal Police Organization is headquartered in Lyon, France and was established in the year 1923 to help police work together to make the world a safer place. It has 196 members, including India. Let's have a look at the organizational structure of Interpol. Its General Assembly is the supreme governing body and meets annually to take decisions related to policy and finances. Its General Secretariat runs the Interpol's day-to-day -day activities to support members in international policing. There is also an executive committee which is elected by the General Assembly and has 13 members comprising President, 3 Vice Presidents and 9 delegates from 4 regions. For India, the CBI acts as a focal point for all Interpol activities. The key functions of Interpol include, it supports national efforts in combating crimes across four global areas of terrorism, cybercrime, organized crime, and financial crime and anti-corruption. It manages police database with information on crimes and criminals. It also provides real-time accessibility to such data to member countries through a 24 by 7 communication system. It also issues color-coded notices like red, yellow, black, purple, and blue. It also offers training to officials. The place in the news for today is Venezuela. India has set to resume imports of oil from Venezuela after three years as US sanctions on the Caracas ease. Venezuela, with its capital Caracas, is located at the northern end of South America. It is not a landlocked country and opens into the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean to the north. It is bounded by Guyana, Brazil and Colombia. Coming to its geographical features, it houses the Andes Mountains. Its major rivers are Rio Negro, Orinoco, and it also houses the Lake Maracaibo, which is the largest lake in South America. Its highest point is Bolivar Peak. As we conclude today's main news, let's go through some quick updates. In Premchandra Kizohoth case, Supreme Court has held that the governor, when serving as a university chancellor, was not bound by the advice of Council of Ministers while exercising his discretionary powers. The Article 163 of the Constitution provides discretionary powers of the governor. At COP28, Allied Climate Partners and the International Finance Corporation have joined hands to generate $11 billion for climate investments in developing countries. The IFC, or the International Finance Corporation, is the private sector arm of the World Bank that encourages private investments in developing countries. India's Prime Minister with his Sweden counterpart co-launched the Phase 2 of the Leadership Group for Industry Transition, or LEAD IT. It was launched by India and Sweden at the UN Climate Action Summit in 2019. India proposed to invite global firms to manufacture hydrogen trains for implementing the Hydrogen for Heritage scheme. The scheme was announced in the Union Budget 
Scientists have developed anthrobots. These are tiny robots made of human cells that are able to repair damaged neural tissue. The International Astronomical Union has named the satellite asteroid Dinkinesh as Selam, meaning peace. Discovered by NASA's Lucy mission, Selam is the first contact binary satellite ever observed. A new jellyfish species found off Japan's coast with 240 tentacles has been named Saint Georgia Pagasi. Its most distinctive feature is bright red cross-shaped stomach. Recently, one horned rhinoceros was killed in Kaziranga National Park of Assam. The national park is part of the Eastern Himalayan Biodiversity Hotspot. Before we go, it's time to put your knowledge to the test in today's segment of Test Your Learning. Thank you for joining us. We hope you have enjoyed this edition of News Today. To get the answer to today's quiz and to download the PDF of News Today, make sure to check out the links in the description below.